This is a story called The Ghostly Lamp. When John moved into his new lodgings, the room was well furnished. The old Victorian terrace housed two bachelors, John on the ground floor and Graham above. They shared the kitchen and bathroom, while the landlord lived elsewhere. The morning John moved in, the landlord was unboxing a table lamp that had just arrived that morning. It was a vintage-looking lamp with ornate stem and coloured glass shade. I thought the room was a bit dingy, the landlord said, plugging it, plugging it in. This is uh, very fitting for the decor. It looks old, but it's been adapted to uh, the modern world. It comes with a fob, so you don't have to get up to switch it off. John thought it delightful. Being autumn, the nights drew in around 7pm. So settling down to his first supper, John closed the curtains and used the fob to switch on the light. Whilst it didn't illuminate the whole room, it certainly brightened up the place. John also found the lamp useful when reading or marking books. He was a teacher at a local secondary school. But when relaxing, watching the telly or a video on his laptop, the lamp was just too much. So switching it off with the fob was handy. All was going wonderfully when one night, after marking was complete, and John wished to kick back and catch up with a drama on the TV that he was following, he switched off the lamp, but then a minute or so later it went on again. He flicked the switch on the fob and out it went, and then a moment later the lamp suddenly went on again. How odd. Getting up, he wondered if he could switch the lamp off at the bulb, but there wasn't a switch. Looking for the plug, he noticed the cable went through a hole in the skirting board into the hallway, and then he remembered the landlord had said that he'd wired it up this way to a socket in the hall because there was no convenient socket that side in his room, and he didn't want extension leads all over the place. Fire hazard, he'd said. Returning to his room, John found the light had extinguished itself. Shrugging, he watched the video and then later shut down the laptop and headed off to his bedroom, which was next door. In the morning, rushing to get to school in time, he popped into the main living room to collect the school books that he'd marked the night before and discovered the lamp alight again. Picking up the fob, he flicked the switch and out it went. That evening, Tired from dealing with secondary school kids, John returned home to meet the chap upstairs, Graham, in the kitchen making a cuppa. Oh, I hope I won't disturb you coming and going at strange hours, John said after an initial introduction. I'm a shift worker, you see. Mind you, that said, you're more likely to be disturbed by the ghost. Ghost? John said, curiously. Hi, uh, I'm told that there was a gruesome murder in the street just outside our doors. Uh, a woman apparently was stabbed about 80 years ago and her, her body was, uh, was left dying and someone brought it into the house, into the room, I think, before she snuffed it. John looked shocked. Mind you, I've, I've never heard anything or seen anything personally, said Graham, but they do say the house is haunted and he popped up to his room. Now, John wasn't easily scared, but he was a little put out by this ghost story. Well, later that night, after finishing marking, John flicked off the lamp as before, only to have it switch on again. He flicked it off, and moments later, it came on again. And just then, there was a horrific, loud, gut-wrenching scream coming outside from the house. John rushed to the front door and opened it nervously, expecting the worse. A young lad was on his bike, stooping down to pick up a dropped mobile phone. Oh, sorry, mate, he said. Me brakes are a bit loud. 
I hope I didn't disturb you. John shook his head and returned inside just as Graham was coming down the stairs. John hailed him. You've certainly got my nerves all of a jitter this evening, he exclaimed. You and your ghost story. And, and what with that and that bloody lamp flickering all the time? Graham laughed. Oh, you're having the same issue, are you? Well, I thought you might be. I was just coming down to reprogram the router. I've got an identical lamp upstairs. The landlord fitted it only a few days ago. The fob is on the same Wi-Fi frequency as yours. Very annoying. You see, every time you switch yours off, mine turns on. <laughs> Stooping down to the shared internet box, Graham twiddled a few knobs. Here we are. We'll soon have this fixed in a jiffy. Well, the light worked perfectly after that. No ghost at all.